When we think about Space Invaders, most of us might turn to the Atari system. But what else was available in the late 70s for us to play with? Let's look at this Syntron Space Invaders game. So this is the item we're going to be looking at. It comes in its original packaging. And it is a Space Invaders handheld game or tabletop game. The overall condition of the unit looks good, but it is listed as not working. Comes with two games. One is a Space Invaders game and the other is a Blockbuster game. All right, let's find out a little bit more about this unit. So having a trawl through the internet, I found out these games are actually made by Ramtech Electronics Limited from Hong Kong. They came out of a variety of uh, different versions of this game, including a single Alien Invaders version. I want to have a look through really to see what the screen looks like. I want to see what the little dot matrix screen is supposed to look like, so we know when it's working properly. So now I've got a better idea of what it should look like when it's working. Let's start to investigate this unit. When I give it a shake, there's a rattle from inside and open the battery compartment, we can obviously see one of the problems. All the batteries in there have previously leaked and have actually destroyed the battery contacts. So let's get this unit apart. But first, let's just check out this little stand to make it into this tabletop version. Okay, let's just try the stand out. That works just fine. Time to release the four screws to separate the two parts of the casing. It's our first view of the electronics inside. And zooming in, we can see that the positive battery connection cable is off and the terminal itself was completely corroded through. Above the battery compartment, we can see there's a combination of three switches. So two side movement switches and the center fire switch. On the right hand side of the casing is the speaker. On the left hand side, we have the circuit boards. Having a quick look at the soldering, this is what you expect for this age of electronic equipment. Some of the soldering is in quite poor condition and quite poorly done. Let's get this uh, top board pulled back so we can gain access to the four screws holding the matrix screen in place. Let's get that off and completely take the unit apart. I want to release the multi switch combination board because we got some cleaning to do and some check in of functions, etc. And we're going to have to rebuild the battery compartment. So for that, we need to remove all the devices from that side of the casing. So this is the first view of the main circuit board. We've got some resistors at the top with some diodes, some transistors, uh, something that looks like a choke, a little inductor there, and an electrolytic capacitor. Remember, these are now 50 years old and the electrolyte in them tends to dry out. So we will definitely be changing this component. And then we've got two chips, the larger chip there, the PIC chip, I think that's the microprocessor, but we'll have a look online so we can find any information on that. And then there's a smaller chip above. So back to a little bit of research, there's not a great deal online for the PIC 1655A. Couldn't find any pinout for it, but it is a microprocessor. A small chip above that was actually a CMOS BDC decimal decoder and that would be what's driving the two digit LED score display at the top. Final component really is the transistor 9013 and these are commonly available still so if we had a problem with the matrix screen we can readily supply new MPN transistors for this. So let's hook up six volts. Remember it's four times one and a half volt batteries. So we're gonna apply six volts to it and turn it on and see what happens. I can see that the scoreboard display has come to life and all the matrix dots appear to work. 
the little paddles either side move left and right and the fire button works okay. This is game one, this is the Space Invaders game. Okay, let's try the second game, the blocks game. When you move it into the second position, the bottom dot becomes a double dot to represent a paddle. And then by pressing the fire button, it shoots a ball up, which then knocks the blocks out of the wall. That all seems to be working correctly. So we can now move on from the testing phase to the repair phase. To start with, because of the age of the equipment, let's give the whole circuit board and switch assemblies a good clean up with a standard degreaser. This is just to clean the contamination off of the boards. Just work the switches in either position to try and help clean the contacts up inside. And then we just blow compressed air through just to get the degreasing agent out. And then move on to a standard electronic cleaning solution which I'll just use on the switches because it has a better cleaning action and it also ends up as a better long-term solution for dodgy contacts. Okay, just blow out the residual cleaning solution again. And then we move on to the soldering. Just have a look for any dodgy joints, dry joints, any bits of poor soldering around the board and just uh, touch it up here and there. Let's move on now to replacing the original electrolytic capacitor. It's 47 microfarad, 50 volt. And uh, this is the modern day equivalent version, the same value which is physically a lot smaller because over the years they've improved the uh, materials used within the capacitors themselves. So we insert the uh, new capacitor and solder it into place. As I've installed a new component and also done some reflow work on the solder joints, I'm gonna have to uh, retest it back on the mains power supply again, just to make sure there isn't any problems. Right, the check was all okay. So I'm gonna move on now to the battery compartment. Firstly, because of the uh, corrosive nature of the leakage from the batteries, I apply white wine vinegar just to neutralize the alkali from the batteries. I'm also going to remove this piece of red material that is used to extract the batteries as it is uh, badly contaminated and I will replace that. So let's take out all the battery contacts that are installed within the uh, battery compartment and see if it's possible to reuse any of them and uh, list out which ones I need to replace. Looks like I'll be able to retain a couple of the battery contacts once they've been uh, cleaned up again. And I'll find some alternative ones for the ones that are beyond repair. So we'll clean and dry out the battery compartment and try and have a clean up of the original battery contacts that we're gonna reuse. So time to start installing the original contacts and the new contact arrangements. What you'll find is that uh, you can never find exactly the same size contacts that were originally fitted. So you tend to have to cut down or modify slightly um, the replacement ones so that they will fit into position. Do a dry fit of the uh, batteries as we go along just to make sure um, everything is in the correct position and once we're happy with that we might need to glue some of the new battery contacts into place to help retain them. With that done we install a set of batteries and leave it for a while for the whole thing to dry properly. Once it's dry with the uh, old batteries we've got currently installed we can now take a voltage reading uh, across the positive and negative terminals just to make sure we have got around 6 volts. We've got a good battery connection. Everything looks good there. 
So let's move on now to replacing the uh, battery removal ribbon. I haven't got exactly the correct size, but I found something similar. So just punch a hole in the end of it so we can refit it back into the casing. So now the fun bit, reassembly. Install all the boards back into position. And attach all the accessories. All right, we're heading towards now the final part of the job. We're just going to tin the battery cables and reconnect and resolder them onto the battery terminals. Okay, final part of the job, put the casing back together again and install some brand new batteries. It's now time to give it a full test and have a bit of fun with it. Give it a go. Let's dim the workshop lights and uh, play the second game. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky to play. The paddle positions are a bit all over the place, but it's now back working again. Hope you enjoyed the video and join us again.